Do you remember the times before Idi Amin came to power and what can you tell us about those times? I remember Obote very well because I was a head prefect in my school and I had to go, and it's all in my book, we had to go and live with him and his family, all the head prefects of Uganda and all the student leaders were called in, the, in our long holiday to go and live with them in the army barracks near a state house because it was 68, 1968 when students in Europe were uh, you know, having revolutions and, also, and, and Obote was really worried about that so I met him and spent time with him and I did not like him. Okay. I thought he was really vicious and actually ruthless man. And of course, he brought in Idi Amin okay. as his general. I met Idi Amin then, and I remember asking him. I was very young, I was a teenager, and I met him during this time in Abu with, with Obote, and he was the general in the army then. And I said to him, why aren't there any Asians in the Ugandan army? And you know, this big man looked down at me like, you know, and he laughed and he said, because we don't eat choroko. Choroko was the African name for lentils. <laughs> okay, because so many of the Asians were vegetarians and they ate lentils. Yeah. So he said, we don't eat choroko. We eat red blood meat. We are brave people. You are not African. I remember him saying that to me. So I knew all of this. Um, and when Idi Amin came into power, uh, you know, it was just continuing what Obote had started. What I didn't know then is that he would carry on and get more and more cruel and, you know, the way he did. But people shouldn't forget that under Obote, Amin and others killed as many people as were later killed. I mean, it's a terrible history. The leaders have always failed the people of Uganda, and, and the people of Uganda are just lovely. In Kenya, the people are much more angry, easily angry. They don't take rubbish very easily. In Uganda, people are more easygoing. Okay. But I also remember that Kampala, when I was growing up, was really India. You know, we had kind of taken the city as ours, which wasn't right. I don't think that was ever right. And we were very, sometimes very um, unkind and often very racist towards black people. And there was a hierarchy, it was like South Africa, the whites were at the top. Kampala is built on a lot of hills and the whites okay. were Zungus, were always at the top. The rich Asians in the middle, the poorer Asians somewhere there, and then the Africans at the bottom. You know, it was there, you could see it. And that wasn't right. Who were the main sufferers under Idi Amin? Would you say it's the Asians or the Africans or did everybody suffer on the same level? I think the Africans suffered much, much more than the Asians did. I mean, it was, it was a terrible thing that he did to us. He took away our homeland. It's my home. He took it away. But we didn't die. Yeah. He didn't kill our children. He didn't you know, he, he didn't imprison us and torture us. I think about 10 Asians in the end died. And I always ask my Asian friends to remember that, you know, that we lost our shops and you lost your um, businesses and you lost, you know, your country, but you could make that somewhere else because you were still alive. Yeah. Have you seen The Last King of Scotland? No. Okay. No. I don't want to see it. I think... Um, I've had enough of this, you know, wasn't Idi Amin a terrible black and horrible man? Idi Amin was partly placed in power by Israel, UK and America. There are papers in this book, there are, there's proof that they put him there. Okay? I, and th this doesn't tell that story. Okay. So I don't want to see it. I wrote this book, um, and it's a memoir of growing up in Uganda. And I brought in quite a lot of the food and, uh, you know, what I miss about it. But it's also because the story of Ugandan Asians is so untold yeah. that I really felt I wanted to have it in a book so future generations could be able to see how we, you know, the part we played in, in the early days of um, 
of opening up the, the building, the railway, for example. It was Asians who built the railway. And hundreds and hundreds of them died, eaten by lions, because they weren't allowed to have weapons. Um, you know, those stories. But it's also the story of um, how, you know, we were racially different. We were in Africa, but we never really became African. And so we went from India to Africa, so we, we were a little bit Indian, then we became a little bit African, and now we're here, and I don't know who we are. So it's, it's a really beautifully written book on um, migration as much as anything else, really.